Hi everyone, and thanks for joining us for this video. Today, we'd like to be speaking about a subject that a lot of people ask us questions about, and it's how to prepare your design or your project for mass production, how to scale up. The goal of this video is really to help you understand what level of requirements you would need and what requirements you can choose, whether you're making a prototype or whether you will be making a mass production run. And the requirements are often very different. And that's a challenge that, again, we very often encounter when dealing with customers that are making a first prototype and who want to scale up. Let's take as a practical example, this little aluminum part that we've already shown in the series before. Um, let's say that the first factor for pricing will be maybe the design and then the quantity. There's uh, sharp corners that need to be considered. Uh, there's, you know, do you have any papered angle uh, or, or the geometry is basically easy to do in a three axis machine with uh, end mills or just conventional tools. When you do a one off, the complexity of the design will have an impact on price. But let's say maybe you won't mind going from $120 to $220 for a one off part. However, if I want to do a thousands of these little guys, uh, then maybe a tiny sharp corner, in, uh, internal sharp corner that's, uh, that's present on the design will actually mean a lot because any teeny tiny feature that will add money will be multiplied by thousand. Sounds relatively easy, but that's a part that oftentimes people don't consider when scaling up from their prototypes to the production runs. They expect uh, the economies of scale to apply with a design that is still unfortunately not mature enough for the technology to give them real meaningful economies of scale. The second, of course, very important thing will be the post-processing. Um, and I like to subdivide the post-processing in uh, several steps because post-processing is often overlooked in complexity. Basically, when you have an as-machined part, if you want a secondary finish or a final finish applied to your product, let's say anodizing, you won't just have one step that is to be taken into account. You will have several process steps. The first one oftentimes will be deburring that involves some manual labor and some manual intervention, no matter how good the machining steps were programmed. Um, the second step will be the primary surface preparation. Let's say in that case, that will be either brushing or bead blasting in the case of anodizing. If you consider brushing, for instance, and I, I think it's a really interesting one. Brushing, for instance, takes a lot of manual workload and is often done or executed by uh, manual workers who have a lot of experience. Oftentimes, years of experience polishing or brushing parts with very fine grits of sandpaper. If you look at this one, uh, the, the, the part is very finely brushed and will be considered as a very good cosmetic product. But the problem with brushing, for instance, is that same as polishing, it's not a really scalable thing when you do it by hand. And unless you do parts at the hundreds of thousands, you probably won't want to purchase a robot and program it to do the polishing of your part. You'll still need to use a human being. With brushing, you probably won't have a lot of scalability and economies of scales as much as you would have with, of course, keeping a part as machined or even um, keeping a part uh, in, in a bead blasting state before the anodizing. Bead blasting, for instance, um, is still a manual step, but it is um, somehow easier, depending on the design, uh, to do bead blasting on a part compared to brushing. Um, and then, let's say, when you consider the secondary uh, processing, uh, the anodizing, for instance, is one that is very oftentimes regarded as a good way of bringing a nice-looking finish in a scalable way on parts. Because the reason being, once the primary finishing is done on the parts, brushing or bead blasting, you can just rack the parts and put them in your anodizing bath. And no matter the quantity of parts that you have, it's very easy to just put a reliable process that will give you the same end finish on all of your parts. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed a little explanation about um, you know, what's, what's important in order to make economies of scale. And of course, if you like this video, please like and subscribe. That will help the channel a lot. And hope to see you in the next video.